Lesson 4.7, Patterns on the Multiplication Table. Make sure you watch the previous lessons so you don't become lost or confused, and they're linked in the description in the third grade math playlist. We can use the commutative property of multiplication and the distributive property to explain number patterns on the multiplication table. Here we have a multiplication table, and if you look, I have these squares colored green. We can write the products for the green squares. We have a 0, 7, 12, 15, 16, 15, 12, 7, 0. Do you see the pattern? There's a 0 on each end, then there's a 7, then there's a 12, then on each side of the 16 there's a 15. When we get to 4 times 4 is equal to 16 in the middle, the numbers are the same, but they change their order. We can write the products for the yellow squares. Here we have a 0, 5, 8, 9, 8, 5, 0. See the pattern? When we get to 3 times 3 is equal to 9, 3 times 3 is equal to 9 in the middle. The numbers are the same, but they change their order just like the green squares changed their order when we got to 4 times 4. These patterns happened because the commutative property of multiplication says we can multiply in any order. 6 times 0 is going to be equal to 0 times 6. 5 times 1 is equal to 1 times 5. We can change their order. 4 times 2 is equal to 2 times 4. Looking at the multiplication table, we have 6 times 0 is equal to 0. And if we do 0 times 6, it's equal to 0. It doesn't matter what order the factors are in, the product stays the same because of the commutative property of multiplication it says we can multiply in any order. If we look at the columns for 1, 5, and 6, we can compare the products. And the products for 6 are the sum of the products for 1 and 5 because 1 plus 5 is equal to 6. So the products for 6, here we go, right here in the yellow, are equal to the sum of the 1's and the 5's. So look at 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 5 is 10, and 2 times 6 is 12, and 2 plus 10 is equal to 12. If we look at the columns for 2, 4, and 6, we see the products for 6 are the sum of the products for 2 and 4, because 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. So let's look at 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 6 is 12, and 4 plus 8 is equal to 12. This pattern happened because the distributive property states that multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each addend by the number than adding the products. So if we multiply 7 times some number, I chose 3, it's the same as multiplying 2 plus 5 times 3 because 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. We distribute the 3 to the 2 plus, we distribute the 3 to the 5, we have 3 times 2 plus 3 times 5. 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. See? 3 times 2 is 6, plus 3 times 5 is 15. 6 plus 15 is equal to 21, so 3 times 7 is equal to 21. And this also works for the columns for 1, 2, and 3, because 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. And it'll work for 1, 3, and 4 because 1 plus 3 is equal to 4, and many others. We could do the columns for 3, 4, and 7 because 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. That's the distributive property. And that would be a pattern on the multiplication table. We can shade the rows for 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So I did, remember rows go across, so for the zeros, twos, fours, six, eights, and tens, I shaded them pink going across, 
And if we look at the multiplication table, we can see that all the products in these rows end with a 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. All the products are even numbers. Taking a closer look at the table, the products are going to end in a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So for the zeros, they all end in 0. That works. For the twos, we have a 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Then it goes back to ending with a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, and a 0 again. For the fours, we have a 0. It ends with a 2, 4. It ends with a 6, 8. And all the numbers in this row are 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 at the end. And the same thing for the sixes, the eights, and the tens. All the products are even numbers. And all the products of four are double the products of two. All the products of six are double the products of three. See? Because it would be double because a double three, three plus three, is equal to six. See? And this works for products of 8 and 4, because 4 plus 4 is equal to 8. And it works for products of 10 and 5 as well, because 5 plus 5 is equal to 10. We can shade the columns, remember columns go down, for 1s, 3s, 5, 7, and 9. We can see that the products repeat as even numbers, then odd numbers, as we look down each column. So it'll go even, then odd, even, then odd. So here's the products for the ones, the threes, and the fives. And as we go down the column, they go even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, all the way down. Remember that zero is an even number because even numbers have a zero, two, four, six, or eight at the end. So he's an even number. So we have a rule for products. When at least one factor is even, the product will be even. When both factors are odd, the product will be odd. And this is a good rule to know because when you're doing a multiplication problem, you'll be able to tell if the answer, the product, should be even or odd. You'll know if you got it right or not. If it comes out the other way, like you multiply two odd numbers, but your product is even, you know you made a mistake. Is the product even or odd and why? For four times eight, is our product gonna be even or odd? Do you know? Do you remember the rule? Four is even and eight is even. When at least one factor is even, even both, the product will be even, and these are both even, so at least one of them is even, our product is going to be even. Here we have five times three, five is odd, three is odd, and the rule says when both factors are odd, the product will be odd. Two times nine, two is even, nine is odd. Remember the rule, at least one factor is even, then our product is even, and 2 is even, so our product is even. How about this one? 3 is an odd number, and we have two of them. So we have an odd number and an odd number. So do you know what this product would be? If you said odd, you're correct. 2 times 5, would our product be even or odd? 2 is an even number, so at least one factor is even, that means our product will be even. 1 times 7, 1 is odd, 7 is odd. We have two odd factors. So do you know what the product is going to be? If you said odd, you're correct. Two odd factors will have an odd product. So remember, numbers that end with a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 are even. Here we have some tables, and it says, will the product be even or odd? And it's not telling us the number, it's just telling us that it's an even number, and it's going to be multiplied to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Do you remember the rule? When at least one factor is even, and this one is, the product is even. So 
because this is an even number, it doesn't matter if these are even or odd, all the products will be even going all the way across. They're all even because we had at least one factor that was even. Now for this one, it's saying it's an odd number. When we multiply an odd number times one, will our product be even or odd? If we know if these are even or odd, that's gonna help us. One is an odd number. If it's multiplied to an odd number, then that means both factors are odd, so that's gonna be odd. 2 is an even number, so now that means we have at least one factor that's even. That means our product will be even. 3 is an odd number. If we multiply an odd number to 3, then both factors are odd. Our product will be odd. 4 is an even number. That means we have at least one factor that's even, so our product will be even. Can you see the pattern that's happening? We went odd, even, odd, even, and five is an odd number. That means we're multiplying an odd number to an odd number. They're both odd, the product will be odd. Our pattern went odd, even, odd, even, odd, just like these are odd, even, odd, even, odd. If you don't know about my Joanne School on Facebook, you can check it out by clicking the link in the description. I have a lot of really nice images in my Facebook page in the image section. And on Twitter and Minds.com, you'll find some images too. You'll find a printable copy of this blank multiplication table. And you can print out one copy or several copies. If you print out several, you can time yourself to see how fast you can complete the table and then try it again and again to see if you can go faster. And the quickest way to do it is to fill in all the zero times table because the zero property says that we can multiply any number to zero and it'll be zero, right? So that'll be all zeros. And the one times table, that's the identity property. They'll all be that number, one times that number. And you can do the twos because those are easy. You can do the fives next because those are pretty easy to skip count by fives. And going down and across, filling them all in. And you could do the tens and then go back and fill in the threes, the fours, the six, the sevens, eights, and nines. Okay? See how fast you can go. You can also use your completed multiplication table to help you with your homework until you get all your multiplication facts memorized. I hope you have a really good day. I hope you're doing well. I hope everything's working out for you. And we're going to talk about multiplying by 8 in the next video, and I hope I'll see you there. Bye.